morning, Siloam family, friends, and all those watching from across the globe. Welcome to Siloam Word of Truth Stanton. Hope that you enjoy this morning with us. Be blessed. Ooh, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Round eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I live in my faith. Nothing is impossible. What a 
beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is And nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Didn't want heaven without us So Jesus you was great, your love was greater, and what could separate us now, what a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, and what a wonderful name What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus.
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Get set and go. These three words were famous words spoken at an athletics event when I was a kid. They were instructions to the athletes, to the runners, those who were competing in the race, to get themselves to the right position. On your marks meant that you needed to get to the starting line. Get set mean, meant that you needed to position and posture yourself for the race that was ahead of you was to get your mind focused, ready, and right for the race. And when you heard the word go, it meant that you had to start running. Another way that this was communicated was ready, steady, go. And it is that central word that I want to share a message with you about today. It is the word get set, or the word get steady. To get set or to get steady means that you posture and prepare yourself for the moment. When the athlete gets on the track and gets himself steady or gets himself set for the race, you will notice that he assumes a certain position and the body takes a specific posture. There is usually silence that surrounds the athlete. And even if it were not on the track, but if you were at the U.S. Masters or sitting in an examination room, silence is imperative for preparing not only the body, but preparing the mind to get the mind into focus for the challenge that was ahead. And so I want to talk to you today on a message entitled, Get Set. I want to encourage you today to get yourself Steady and position yourself for where you are headed, for the race that is ahead of you. I know that we have been through some challenging seasons in this year 2020. And right now, as things drag along, it may seem, we may be growing weary in our souls. There may be a sense of tiredness coming upon us. And today I want to encourage especially those who are growing tired, who are growing weak, who have this sense of uncertainty about when times are going to change and what to do next. And I want to say to you, reach within yourself and pull up the Word of God and get hope alive again today. Because right now is not a time to give up. Right now is a time to get set. Because something is about to shift. Something is about to change. And it will require of you to begin running. So get yourself ready and steady. Let's go to scripture in the book of Psalm 42 verse number 11. The psalmist writes this. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Here in the 42nd Psalm, the psalmist finds himself in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of challenge, in the midst of pain, and something that has been prolonged in his life. But he begins to speak to his soul. And begin to tell his soul to find hope again in the Lord God Almighty. 
Hope is an intangible realm that lies deep within us. But hope can also be activated by external action from our part. To hope in this piece of scripture means to wait and to wait patiently. Not only to wait patiently, but to wait with expectation. This waiting is the active part of hope. About doing something, getting into action to stir up the hope from within you. Waiting is a combination of posture and time. It is a posture that one's, one assumes. It is to position oneself in readiness for what is about to happen. Waiting is a pause in time, knowing that something is about to happen or change. There is evidence in the text as we read through Psalm 42 that the writer is not in the most glorious moment of his life. He's going through some tears. He's going through some words and oppression from people that are around him. He's going through some trying time with his enemies. But here's the beauty of the text. It is in the midst of issues. It's in the midst of weariness of his soul. In the midst of torment and turmoil in his mind. That he pulls himself to a place where he is steady, a place where he speaks to himself to come out of the situation and not be too emotionally entangled. He speaks to himself to get steady, to still himself and to be set for what is ahead of him. It is so easy when we're going through trying situations to just go with the flow, to do what everybody else does. But here, the psalmist gives us an example of a different decision. He gives us a different option. That option is to speak within ourselves, to ourselves, and to find the means to press on. He says, get set, get ready. Oh my soul, don't be downcast. Hope in God. Hope in God. In other words, he's pulling his mind and his thoughts to a place of focus that's going to help him get through the tears, help him get through the enemy lines, help him get through the words that are coming against him from people. People are always going to have something to say, child of God. Whatever it is you are believing God for, Whatever it is you believe God can do through your life, I want to say to you today, people are always going to have an opinion about it. Whether you're doing the right or the wrong thing, people are going to have something to say. They may be saying, Abraham, you're too old. They may be saying, Hannah, you're too barren. They may be saying, Habakkuk, times are too dark. They may be saying, Elijah, in case you haven't noticed, there's a great drought around. I want to say to you today, it may not look like it now, but you have got to fine-tune your spiritual ear and listen to a different frequency in the atmosphere. Oh, the atmosphere may look the same to everybody else, but it does not have to sound the same. What did the psalmist do in the 42nd Psalm? He spoke to himself in the midst of the voices of people that were coming against him, asking, where is your God now? In the midst of enemies coming up against him, in the midst of his tears, he probably could have had some negative emotions and, and thinking that could have pulled him down. But there's a voice that stirs up, that sounds differently. It may look the same to everybody else, but it does not have to sound the same to you. 
I know as we travel in a vehicle nowadays or we sit at home just lounging around, one person could be on an iPad and just have their earphones plugged in listening to their own preferred music while somebody else Bluetooths to another device and there's other music filling the atmosphere. Somebody else is updating themselves on what's happening in the social media scene. Everybody is focusing on something different even though they're in the same environment they're tuning into something else what is the frequency that you are listening today to child of God I want to ask you fine tune your ear your spiritual ear and begin to listen to what God is saying for your moment for your season for your day for your next what is he calling you to Oh, it looks the same. Everybody's been on lockdown. We're dealing with pandemics. There's crisis in the. Everybody's in the same kind of atmosphere. But it does not have to sound the same to you. Right now, as this message is being preached to you, are you tuned in to what the Word of God is saying? Or is there some interruption in the frequency where you are right now? You have to make the decision for yourself, child of God. What voice you are going to listen to. What message you are going to speak to yourself. Perhaps one of the challenges you face today is aloneness. There's a lot going on in the world. And it seems like nobody knows what you're really going through. Nobody knows what you're really facing, what kind of storm. It may feel like you're going through your own pain, you're going through your own story in your own little corner, and nobody else understands. And so it becomes so easy in the midst of our aloneness. It's not loneliness, because sometimes you can have people around you, but you're still alone. And it can be so easy to just find the comfort food or get ourselves just throwing up our feet on the couch and just binging through series or binging through whatever's in the cupboard or in the refrigerator. It's so easy to do that. But I want to say to you today that you're not the only one who's been alone in the midst of challenges. Abraham had to believe by himself, for himself. Hannah had to believe on her own for herself. Habakkuk had to find some faith standing alone for himself and for the generations ahead of him. Elijah had to pray alone, believe himself for himself and for the nation that he was praying for when he prayed for the drought to end. What did they do to get set? Abraham said, I'm going to believe while I wait. That's in Romans chapter 4. Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1 said, I'm going to negotiate with God while I wait. It was Habakkuk who said, I am going to write the vision down while I wait. And Elijah said, I'm going to get down on my knees and I'm going to pray until there's a cloud in the sky while I wait in 1 Kings chapter 18. That's what these people did and many others in scripture. This is the thing about the hope that they had, child of God. It was not just something intangible that they thought should just stir up on the inside of them. While they were waiting, they stirred up the hope by something that they engaged themselves with. And as they did, as they prayed, as they negotiated, whatever it is these people chose to do as we read their stories in Scripture, there was something they got into action about, and it stirred up the hope, and it saw their storyline change. Here's the thing, here's the message for you today. Figure out what it is you should be doing right now. Yes, you are waiting for things to change. But what are you going to do while you wait? Do you need to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, Hey, 
How are you doing? Do you need to update your resume while you're waiting for something to change? Do you need to increase your value by taking up a course of study while you wait? Do you need to upgrade your negotiation skills while you wait? Do you need to do some market research while you wait? Find out what's changing in the globe. Find out how needs are changing. Find out who needs you and what it is you can do to serve them while you wait. It's not just a waiting game for things around us to change. It's a waiting game of doing something to change what's on the inside of us and our perspective on the circumstance. And it may require that we speak to ourselves. Speak to ourselves like the psalmist did in the 42nd chapter of the book of Psalms. Speak to ourselves like Habakkuk did. Habakkuk said, yet will I rejoice. That word yet, that word yet is a word that says, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to rejoice despite the circumstance. I'm in no way saying to you today, child of God, that you need to pretend like nothing challenging is going on in your world. What I am saying to you is you need to decide what your yet will be. What's going to motivate you to get up and to do something that's going to draw on the hope that God already has invested in you? See, I am calling you to action today. And I know that God can change things in a moment. I know that God can turn circumstances around. I know that God can come into a prison and cause an earthquake and see chains fall down off of people. I know that God can work through his apostles and see their shadow move over people who are sick and they get healed instantaneously. I know that God is a God of power and might. God can do miraculous things. But what I also know about God is that he is an author. He has written the script. But it is up to us to actually read the script. To find out what our part, what our role in the script is. And once we do, we need to begin to act. We need to engage. We need to live out what God has called us to do. Here's the thing about Psalm 42. The psalmist says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Then he says, hope in God. The psalmist is speaking to himself. You see, child of God, God may have many promises in his word, and he can perform the promises he has in his word. But sometimes it's our own voice that is an obstacle to what God is able to do in and through our lives. And so I'm saying to you and I today to get set. I'm saying today, get steady. Don't let your emotions be wild and going crazy all over the place. Pull yourself together and get a hold of your thought life. Get a hold of the voices that you are listening to. And make sure that only the word of God is getting in. Make sure that only the word of God is rising up. Why should you be speaking to yourself? Why should you be speaking to your soul? Because, child of God, no one else knows the story that you are telling yourself except you. Preachers may preach, but they don't know what's going on on the inside of you. And the story that you choose to tell yourself despite the sermons that are preached, despite the prayers that are prayed, despite the supernatural possibilities of God. There is a story on the inside of you. There's a voice on the inside of you that only you can hear and that only you know. And because it is in your world, because it is in a secret place that no one else can reach. Only you can speak to you and say, soul, get up and hope in God. And so I pray today that you will begin to encourage yourself with the word of God. Get set. Get steady. Because there's a race that is coming your way and you need to prepare 
to run to the finish line and win the race ahead of you. I pray God's blessing upon you today. I pray God give you the strength and the courage to rise up and cross that finish line. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and grant you great 